Texas A&M, it sounds like the craziness of your coaching search is about over. Mike Elko, head coach at Duke, formerly is set to be the next head coach in College Station. So what do we make of this? H how do we feel about this hire for A&M? Is this the right way to go? Did they maybe swing a little bit too short for this one and could have gone for a bigger name? We got our thoughts on this one right now, but first things first, make sure you're subscribed to the On3 YouTube channel, Texas A&M Texas fans. Had a lot of y'all join the party recently and be subscribed with this coaching search going on. Uh, Billy Lucci from Texags is known to make an appearance on this platform. So would encourage you to one, subscribe. Second, would encourage you to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JD Pacal. I got a tweet up right now or an X post, whatever we're calling it these days, asking one through 10, what would you rate the hire of Mike Elko to a and So with that out of the way, let's just kind of, uh, let's get this out in the open here. This was not the splashy big name hire that I think maybe some folks in College Station were hoping for when this whole coaching search started. Because to be real, like there were some big names out there that got floated at different points. You saw everything from Dabo Sweeney to Ryan Day. Lane Kiffin was thrown out there at the very beginning of this thing. You heard Mike Norvell thrown out there at the very beginning of this thing. And I don't know how much of that was real versus a smokescreen, but like to call a spade a spade, you could have swung very big here if you were A&M. You had the pockets to swing big, and we already knew that going forward, but that was, I think, reaffirmed by nature of the names that got thrown out there. So I think there's something to be said for the temptation whenever you have some deep pockets to go for what you want rather than what you need. A&M fans, and, and there's, I'm not saying everybody, I think there's a small portion of the A&M fan base that probably wanted the next big name, wanted the Maserati kind of hire, the splashy hire. Well, to be clear, A&M just did that with Jimbo Fisher. They just got off the Maserati kind of name for a head coach, and it didn't work. So I think what you got here for Mike Elko is a lot more of what you need. Because you think, what does Mike Elko bring to the table? He brings structure. He brings culture. He brings identity. He brings toughness. He brings all the things that take absolutely zero talent from a roster standpoint that you need. Okay? And AM, to be clear, they have a lot of talent on that roster. They have a lot of what you need to win football games. It's a matter of getting it all positioned and organized and in a spot to be successful, kind of putting that machine in the right position to win football games. So you wanted maybe the Maserati hire, but you got, I think, the more reliable, fuel-efficient, dependable hire in Mike Elko. And I, I think when you look at what he did at Duke, I mean, Duke, to be real, they were 3-9 and nine when Mike Elko got there. First year in the system, they go 9-4. and 7-5 and five the next year, this year. You're not supposed to win at a place like Duke. Not that you can't win, but just by nature of what's in place at Duke with the barrier to entry with the academic standards at a place like Duke. Like it's, it's not a place where you're, go, you're supposed to go and compete how they've competed in that conference. So the big thing we said going into this whole search was if I'm a and I might take a closer look at someone who can potentially do more with less. Someone has a track record of doing more with less. Duke isn't getting the four-star guy, the five-star guy consistently. It's probably a lot of three stars. Heck, maybe a couple of two stars with a really high ACT score that are able to do what's asked of them, be tough, be gritty, and play within Mike Elko's structure of a program. And so now, with that having you know been on his track record, if you can do more with less, the big question now is, can you do more with more? That's going to be the question, ultimately, that will define Mike Elko's time in College Station. But the reason why we, from the very beginning of this coaching search, had Mike Elko as our number one guy, we said it at the, the very first video when this whole coaching search started, we said, hey, I would go after Mike Elko. He makes a lot of sense to me. We thought he was the best fit because not just the structure and, and the things that we talked about with culture and identity and doing more with less, because you could have gone after a lot of guys like that. You did go after a guy like that with Mark Stoops. Chris Kleiman was a name that got thrown around at the very beginning of this thing. But the reason why Mel Mike Elko the reason why Mac Elko was the best fit for this job is because you cannot overstate the importance of fit at a place like Texas A&M. Some places it's just more important to be understanding of what you're walking into than others. Like if I've never been to a five-star steakhouse before and I just hear the name of it and I show up like I'm going to dinner anywhere else and I act like I'm going to dinner anywhere else, 
it, it may not be the best dinner for me. I, I might get a couple of weird looks. I might have the server come up and say some things to me. Bottom line, I might not be as successful in that situation as I would have been if I knew what I was walking into. Mike Elko, having been in College Station before, having been a defensive coordinator there for multiple years, he knows what he's walking into. And to put it even more, you know, put, put a more, I think, important point on it, he wants to walk into what he's walking into. Because Mike Elko, if he didn't get this job at AM, he would have got another head coaching job at some point in time. Whether it was this cycle or another time after his time at Duke in a couple of years or whatever, like he would have been just fine. Okay, to be clear, he wanted to be at AM. He wants to be a part of what they're doing there. And you say, well, Jody, there's a ton of money there. Of course he wants to be a part of that. Yeah, that probably is a part of it. But I think Mike Elko is someone who wasn't looking for just the next job. I think he was looking for the right job. And so now at A&M, when I talk about having to, you know, know what you're walking into, yes, it's a place that it's obviously, you know, extremely visible with you being the head coach there. And there's a ton that the community buys into you, but you have to buy back into a place like that. I mean, I've been in Bryan College Station. I worked there for all of like, you know, a few months being a reporter there. That's a, that's a city and a, and a Brazos County as a whole, like you, you have to get it. And I think Mike Elko gets it. I think he wants to be a part of it. I think he wants to buy back into the people that are buying into him at A&M. And I'm excited to see how this looks. The question that I posed to y'all at the beginning of this segment, the question that's still up on my Twitter page of one through 10, what do you rate the higher for A&M going after Mike Elko? I think Mike Elko is a 8.5 kind of higher out of 10, which is honestly on the higher side of what a lot of people are communicating on that post right now. So curious to hear your thoughts. Again, culture, structure, a lot of what A&M needs, a lot of what they need to put that talent to use. I think he embodies and he gets what he's walking into. And A&M, I think, I think this is a great hire. I think A&M is, is a place where he can be successful and I'm excited to see how it looks. So again, let me know on my Twitter page at JD Pacquel, one through 10, what you rate the higher. Make sure you're subscribed because we got a lot more to talk about with these Aggies here as they get ready for signing day, as they move forward here into the Mike Elko era. Want y'all dialed in. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling. We'll see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.